Resilience occurs when people face adversity and they're looking to sort of move forward or move past, move beyond that sort of negative life experience, maybe even bounce back, although it's hard to go back after you've ex experienced any type of adversity, um, but kind of moving forward from any kind of tragedy, disaster, or other difficult life experience. So that could range from, you know, failing an exam to, um, you know, the loss of a parent or something much sort of larger and more serious. And in communication, we talk about resilience as a process of meaning making through everyday messages and stories that enable reintegration from life's disruption. So it's really about communicating with other people and sort of engaging in telling our story and making sense of what's happened to us and helping us move forward. Um, so this is a communicative process that people engage in, resilience is. It has also been talked about as an outcome or a trait, um, but here we're going to talk about resilience as a process we engage in with others. So I want to talk about five types of resilience. The first resilience process is crafting normalcy. And this is creating new routines and sort of making things feel normal despite having a, a life disruption or some sort of a kind of tragedy or adversity that you're facing. So this could be sort of talking normalcy into being like, you know, yeah, this happened, but, you know, I still get up every day and I have my coffee and have my toast and, you know, we've kind of found ways to... to keep this normalcy despite all these things being different in our lives. The second is affirming identity anchors. This is taking a look at which parts of your identity were perhaps not changed by the disruption or challenge that you're facing. So if you lost your job, then you might focus on other identities that you still have. So for me, that might be daughter or sister or wife and really kind of pouring myself into that and thinking about how that's important to me because when we have life disruptions, especially something like losing a job, it can feel like you're very lost, right? And your identity is sort of missing or, or really changed. And so focusing on the identity anchors that you still have can be a way to engage in resilience. Maintaining and using communication networks includes spending time with others inside and outside of, um, you know, work or the community or the family for social support. It can also include building and utilizing social capital. So perhaps reaching out to those networks for things other than support, or other types of support. So in the example from earlier about losing the job, it could be something like, you know, asking uh, if anyone knows of any temporary work or has any leads on jobs and also relying on allies. So people who maybe have been through um, what you've been through before, that could be part of this maintaining and utilizing social networks. And this is really about reframing the problem, finding a different way to look at the problem to allow the person or the family or whoever is going through this tragedy or adverse event to move forward. And the fifth resilient strategy is downplaying negative feelings while focusing on positive emotions. I think this one's really cool because it's about recognizing what's happened, but seeing that there are some good things too, right? This, there's always a silver lining, right? Even in the most um, sort of upsetting tragedies and challenges, there's always something to be learned. There's something to take away from the, the challenge. And so this one's really about saying like, yeah, that was terrible. I definitely don't want to do that again. Um, but here's sort of what's come out of it. Here's how I'm different. Here's how my family's different. And here are some of the, the kind of positive things and trying to focus on those positive things, but without denying that the negative um, occurred. These are not the only five uh, resilience processes that are out there. There are certainly others, and you may be able to think of some of the ways that you show resilience and engage in resilience with other people when you face challenges and adversity. And I encourage you to reflect on those and um, make those a part of your resilience toolkit, right? Because you will face adversity and challenges in the future. And knowing what these are and what tools are available to you can be really helpful.